So welcome everyone to our second podcast from Ice Free Sky. I'm Francesca, one of the directors. Um, today we're going to be talking about revenue enablement and the role of the CRO. So a really new topic and one that I'm keen to debate with my fellow directors. So if you want to introduce yourselves as well. Yep. So hi, I'm Charlotte. I'm the chief exec of Ice Blue Sky. Yeah. Hi, I'm Graham. I'm one of the other directors here at Ice Blue Sky. Um, and I'm really looking forward to today's podcast. I think it's going to be quite educational. I think we're all going to learn something internally. I know, Francesca, you've really sort of immersed yourself into this subject. So we're really interested to sort of hear, hear what you've learned. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So I'm happy to kind of kick off really with my understanding of revenue enablement, because I think there's a bit of a misconception in the market on what it is or a lack of understanding. Like recently, Charlotte and I both actually did some research into revenue enablement. We spoke to about 60 people, um, either, you know, one to one or or across um, some surveys. And I think it, the large majority of people really didn't understand or hadn't heard of what revenue enablement is. And, and so they were all in the tech sector, weren't they? Absolutely. Which is interesting, yeah. Tech sector, so managed service providers, um, vendors, and IT channel partners as well, and professional services organisations. So just as a kind of level set around revenue enablement, we're, we're really honed in on the Gartner definition. Um, and it's about looking at the whole customer journey, like end to end, having full visibility of that, having consistency across that, because it's about removing friction from the customer um, by process of sort of customer buying journey, I should mm. say. Um, and it's about alignment as well. And when we talk about alignment, it's marketing sales and customer success. It's all of those um, functions that tuss, cu- touch the customer and really make a difference in terms of when you're interacting with those. Um, so Charlotte, tell us, what did you kind of learn maybe a little bit about that as well? Um, well, I think like you, I think I saw people didn't really, they weren't familiar with it as a term. I mean, obviously the words revenue enablement, they're quite self-explanatory. Yeah. So people sort of put their own interpretation on it. Um, but I think, you know, unsurprisingly, it's, and I don't know if this is a sort of uh, consistent with all of the tech sector or all b2b sectors but revenue is just seen as a very siloed thing in most organizations most large organizations Mm. so you have sales over here you have marketing over here you have customer success or professional services or or you know blah 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 blah. you have all of those different teams they all impact revenue you've got the renewals team for example they all impact revenue but i think it's really unusual to come across an organization that looks at all of those revenue touch points holistically, and I think that's 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 the um, the idea, isn't it, of revenue enablement and the CRO role is is to tackle that problem. I think that I think what we're seeing in reality is some people are looking at it like that. A lot of other companies are just promoting people from the sales team into a CRO CRO role it's quite hard to say it is <laughs> into the CRO role because they see it as an alternative to the chief sales officer for example but I believe that's not the right approach because then that's not true revenue enablement you need someone with experience in sales and marketing and customer success and renewals yeah they're not going to be easy to find yeah do these people exist <laughs> <laughs> but that that's what I saw Yeah, and I think, you know, you've got a couple of challenges that really, really face companies when they're looking at taking more of a revenue enablement model because there's culture, there's mindset about fostering working together, working differently, which to your point has to come from the top because it's about underpinning it with the metrics, the OKRs, whatever they might be. Um, So you've got culture. I think you've got legacy systems is a massive one that's really holding people back because you haven't got visibility in all of those different areas. Or just lots of systems. Yeah, you're using different systems on each that aren't Mm. necessarily talking to each other. So how do you have visibility? How do you use that data? And then how do you understand where your challenge points are in that revenue journey effectively or that buyer journey where is it it not resonating with the customers where can you input to to affect that and without the visibility and without the right data you can really struggle so i think that's another key Mm. area that people are struggling on and then finally i think another one is compensation like you touched on customer success then 
A lot of organizations I've spoken to and I'm aware of, they don't compensate their customer success people in the same way. No. So they're not looking for the next leg of value. So then sales are complaining that they're not being given the opportunities necessarily to to act on. But actually, you know, we, we argued in our previous um, podcast that sales needs to be involved earlier, marketing needs to be involved later. But actually, when we look at customer success, they need to be involved earlier because they need to be talking about the value mm -hmm. and how we're going to achieve the value to the, achieve the adoption. And, and sales need to involve later again well, exactly. in those quarterly reviews. And, and, and I think as well, the challenge is if you look at, the tech sector you can't treat it as a hom as an homogenous mm. thing because you've got different models you, you've got a SaaS company yeah and i mean a true SaaS company not an on-premise company that now makes their product available online because what i mean by a true SaaS company is someone like monday.com who were born in that environment and they've and they have and they have kind of high volume but lower cost transactions mm -hmm. You can't treat that the same in terms of customer success as, say, a company like IBM who's selling Absolutely. three to five million dollar software SaaS, but Absolutely. but totally different model. And I think, you know, it's it's understanding how you manage all of those different things that you were just talking about in those different environments. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a role of marketing in customer success for that type of example mm. Mm. there in mm. terms of the digital touch points that you'll be having with those mm. those customers post sale yeah. to really expand the sale further. Yeah. And in well. those more traditional companies, what's interesting is marketing sometimes isn't allowed near the customers. No, I, I was just about to say, actually, I think that's a really interesting point. Is the role of the CRO, and you know, and we talk about culture. You were talking about cultures mm. within organisations. Is the CRO uh, a CRO? You're right. You can't say easily. Can you? Know, I put my teeth in. Um, is the role of the CRO sort of brokering in 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 the emergence of this? Are they brokering cultures? Are they basically working with the culture of sale, the culture That's of marketing, and is their role to bring that? together because as we saw we were talking about before we came on mm. the podcast didn't we we spoke about that, that it could cause quite a bit of conflict you've got this new role this new responsibility that's been defined but actually what's the impact what's the impact on marketing how do they feel about it how what's the impact on sales and how do they feel about it and do they see that that's threatening their positions and we all understand that's a big thing in companies and culture mm. so i i guess the importance is from that CRO is to understand those competing cultures and then like try and blend those together. And that's why they need that mixed experience. Absolutely. Because you can't blend cultures together unless you understand the drivers of each of those cultures, mm. you know, and, and, and when you've, and to have lived it, because we all know it's mm. great to operate in the world of theory, isn't it? But until you've lived it, until you've had skin in the game in those areas, you, you it's almost impossible, which is, again, why I'm a little bit cynical, <laughs> because I think it's, it's it's a tough it's a tough gig. Yeah, and I think as well when we talk about the CRO and we talk about revenue enablement, the terms themselves don't truly reflect also what that's about, and that's mm. about no. putting the customer in the middle. Yeah, it's about it, making yeah. it seamless and reduce friction for the customer it's about delivering the customer's outcomes and delivering value to that customer and making sure those touch points are really hugely relevant as well for them yeah. right in terms of if we took that example of you for you gave of monday.com say they've just releasing a load of feature releases and sending that to their customers with no context mm. around it to the way that that which is exactly what they do yeah, by the way oh, is it? I, get those yeah. e I get those emails okay. <laughs> so the way that age say for example sorry monday.com yeah <laughs> but if you think about it from that in scenario if they thought right okay well this is a marketing agency we're sending these updates to how would they be using our system and how can we control the information we're sending them and make it practical actionable yeah. use case related 100%. it's going to drive a lot more like adoption so that role of the CRO and revenue enablement actually has that customer mm. at the centre as well as the customer journey. Well, and I think the term doesn't tell us that. It, it doesn't, leaves us it in doesn't. the wrong direction almost. And, no. it, and it's interesting because it's also about looking at new ways that buyers want to buy because there is a yes. hu there's been a huge increase since COVID, but it's continued of B2B buyers wanting to self-serve online. Now, obviously that doesn't work across all tech, and I get that. But it is something that is, 
again, it, it depends. So the companies like monday.com, that's how they've always done it. But the, the more traditional IT companies, they, a lot of them just aren't even addressing that need at all. And I think it's for exactly the reasons you we've just all been talking about where these, these presences are so siloed. Mm. You know, you've got a sales team to feed, but and 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 you you may not even have the ability at all for customers to self serve any part of the buyer journey online and i think that in itself is a huge opportunity but who owns it is it marketing because they run the website yeah, is it but sales because it's, it's, it's selling yeah and it's and interesting you talk this is about exactly where it comes in yeah, yeah you talk about i think i think the hang up word in all of this is revenue and yeah. I think revenue has always been attributed to sales. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. I and I think so that's, that's where people's minds. Yeah, go. absolutely. So I think there's a little bit of a stereotypical thing that revenue or customer success that's all around sales or post sales or customer success. And actually, what we're seeing is marketing have a massive role to play in all of this yeah. when it's brought all together, because actually it accelerates, as, as you rightfully said, mm-hmm. Francesca, it accelerates that success in the sales process. Now, we, we all understand about targets. We all understand about revenue streams and, and, and you know, pipeline and things like that. I get that. Yeah, of course but do. I guess what we're seeing and what's important for people who are listening to this today is that, you know, Marketing have a big, big role to play in this, and increasingly so to make sure that the sales process is more relevant, more on point, and to the needs, as you rightfully said, of the buyer. Yeah, no, I think, you know, to your point there, Graham, if you look at those three functions, and arguably you've got like professional services as well, probably you've got customer success, sales, marketing, if we boil it down to three, they are equally important to each. Yeah. as each other right yeah. Yeah, you are. cannot succeed in growing your revenue and serving your customers properly which will drive retention growth etc without each other no. so no. there has to be that alignment and there has to be that role that's focused on how are we serving our customers best across that full yeah mm-hmm. end-to-end and, journey and that is and revenue that is enablement. a really good point because marketing within these tech companies is so often the poor relation of that trifecta because they are because of the expectations around what marketing is supposed to deliver. So, and it goes to the first episode where we were talking about the va- MQLs, in my opinion, devalue marketing because it's, it's, it's one very binary measurement, whereas marketing should be targeted on other things mm. and other just as valuable things, you know, as engagement within large accounts. And all, I don't want to get into yeah, that. And you yeah. were talking about that early qualifying out and, yeah. and and then all of a sudden it goes back on marketing. So, well, you know, what you're passing over yeah. is, shows that, no value. Exactly. And that's why, again, that CRO role who gets put into it should have as much marketing experience as they do sales because marketing like it or not needs a champion at the sea level yeah, absolutely because they are often the whipping child for whatever goes wrong on the revenue side yeah and i think talking about perceptions as well if we think about customer success often you think right the hardest bit is getting a customer over the line we all know that yeah. everyone knows that etc yeah. So when we've got that and we've we sold it, the important piece is delivering on those outcomes, right? And expanding that relationship. It's really key that we have the right, I guess the right level of presence of sales in that post sale as well. Customer mm. success is so important. If we do that as a as a separate function that's not involved in with any kind of um I guess, business development approach to it. Mm. We're leaving a lot on the table, both in terms yeah. of customer success, um, customer satisfaction, retention, insight. growth, insight, Absolutely. everything. So I think it just goes to what we're saying. The three need to pull mm. together and together that's where we're going to grow as a business, yeah. but also help our customers succeed, mm. which is why everyone is in business, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. These, Sorry. No, I was going to say, I, I, I think... You know, we're trying to define that CRO. And uh, I, I live a lot of my life in analogies. Sorry, people. But um, <laughs> but it's almost like the Should CRO. Sense check this first. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, this is a good one. No, um, but it's almost like the CRO is like a conductor. Mm. It's feeling the heartbeat of the client base and the possibilities and bringing in the right disciplines to actually enhance what has to be achieved. 
Yeah. Um, and it can't be the same. It's not a, a one fix across everything. Because, because as you rightfully said, you know, you are managing so many different things about those awarenesses. So how are we creating fantastic awareness out in the marketplace? How are we bringing people down the funnel? As you rightfully said, once we've converted them, what do we now need? How do we need to bring that client on the journey of discovery? Then it's the same when they're ready to renew or whatever that might be. But what's the orchestra got to play at a certain time within, within the jurisdiction? jurisdiction of that sort of relationship absolutely and i think the bit that we we've got to emphasize as well under that is the processes the data the technology and that's not a mean feat to achieve that to be able to what we're talking about is the utopia here and how you do that (laughs) but actually there's a lot under that especially as we said i think at the beginning like with legacy systems and Mm. systems not talking to each other so Mm. the technology and the data play a huge part because if we have the data, there's some low hanging fruits there, right, as yeah. well, that the CRO can say, right, these are some key areas we can focus in hmm. and prove this model quickly with some low hanging fruit. Yeah. And almost, it's, I think it's probably a three to five year journey that people are on, right, oh, depending well, on side of company, so. right? Yes. Obviously, yeah. if you're smaller, then, then it's a lot easier. If you're mm-hmm. younger, maybe it's a lot easier. You've not got so much legacy to unpick. But I think the results, the, you know, the fruits are there. Like yeah. if people, yeah. invest in it yeah i can't remember the gartner stat was it something like the of people that i think the 20 percent of companies out there in the market who have actually deployed revenue enablement 85 percent of them are over exceeding on their their revenue targets yeah and i know it just talks about revenue but that's an indication of customer happiness and all yeah, the rest it, of it because right? it covers everything doesn't it It covers renewals it covers you know exactly. net new land exactly. and expand, all of those you're not going to be hitting those revenue targets if you're getting a load of churn or whatever no, it might yeah, be right exactly I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about one of the big challenges we've touched on a couple of times here around legacy um and I know that, you know, we as a business have been involved with RPA, for instance. You know, is RPA, robotic process automation, is that is that the short-term fix for businesses until the legacy systems catch up? Well, it could, because we're yeah. looking at that, aren't we? Yeah, of course we are, yeah. Because mm. all of our customers have all different yeah. robotic Absolutely. automation CRM systems. Where we're using bots to go into those legacy, legacy systems yeah. to say, actually, we need a little bit of this, this, we need all of that, we need to combine that, and then we need to do some analysis of yeah. that to give us a proper report. Which makes more sense than building a whole fixed dashboard. Yeah, know? and while you're doing that and you're building actually those requirements the evolution or the purchasing of that next system you need mm. is predefined because you know actually what you want mm. what you want to see almost yeah, yeah. so there is a fix out there but i just wonder how many people actually think about rpa as a process to actually yeah. maybe fix and I it did, i did talk about that to one of the um the ceos i talked to actually okay. who looked at that when he was the cro of a really large uh, software vendor and it was kind of a mixed response, to yeah. be honest. And I think it's a podcast all of its own, Graham, <laughs> yeah. to well, be honest. Again, I, would, I would probably say, I would probably <laughs> Episode say, four. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get an RPA specialist in. We know a few. Um, we do. But um, it, it, does that come from a place of fear? We, mm. we know that what stops people is that fear of really sort of trying to deliver something that they feel is going to fail or not, or not give the positive outcome. No, I think it's complexity and almost like trying to mm. unpick the complexity first before using a fix like as a okay. as a sticky plaster so yeah i think it's the definition though it's the challenge not about right okay what would be really great if i could aggregate all the all the data i have to tell me this yeah i get your like point definitely outcome. and i think it depends on the organization yeah, of right course, but i yeah, think it is a fix in certain situations yeah. for sure people yeah. want it but it's really hard it's, to do yeah, it's, yeah. It's, even with something like rpa yeah and absolutely maybe like to close out on (laughs) revenue enablement in the CRO, like in conclusion, what we're saying here is it's placing the customer at the center. It's about creating um, a journey for the customer that's friction free. We're creating alignment across all the organizations and understanding of each other, a way of working together through the culture. Mm. It's a consistency of approach and messaging, et cetera, for the customer. Um, And the final, as we said, it's, visibility like let's see what's happening across that journey let's see how we can make it better in terms of growth and for the customer experience and we've got the report coming out so it'll either be it may probably be out by the time this gets published absolutely yeah so as charlotte mentioned we've just done a really 
good report around the state of the nation in the IT industry for revenue enablement. So please do look out for the information around that or check out our website as it'll probably be up there. Yeah, great. Yeah, great Thanks podcast. Everyone. I feel like I've learned something anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks.